good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jason Hewlett. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this webinar. It's much appreciated. What are we going to be doing on the webinar? Well, we're going to be talking, hopefully this is what you're expecting, we're going to be talking about capture. Uh, we'll cover the current release, which is capture 14. We'll run through some of the fundamentals uh, behind capture, um, why it's a great solution, cost-effective solution for you to use for recording your live inputs. What's new um, in 14 and uh, the later versions? Um, what we're doing next, and we'll give you a, a little sneak preview into some awesome features that uh, or awesome feature that's coming in version 15 and its timeline. So let's get started. Uh, I see a number of you have uh, have joined. Some of them I recognise, some I don't. We have quite a mixed audience, which is great. Uh, some that uh, have come across Synergy before and our product sets, and some faces I don't recognise, which I uh, hopefully I, I knew. New people, so so welcome to the Synergy family. Uh, Synergy, we're a software company, so we don't believe in selling you a load of hardware boxes. Uh, you should be able to use standard off-the-shelf servers, uh, PCs, standard IT hardware, and then by adding our software on top, it makes it useful within the broadcast environment. Uh, this webinar itself, split basically into two parts uh, the first part i will explain the say the new features what capture is how you can use it and then the second part we'll do a quick demo leaving at the end of that time for any questions that you you may have uh, wish to to raise um, at the end of the seminar now before i start the first part those that aren't familiar uh, with the uh, go to webinar uh, if you want to post a question in the chat, uh, I'm reliably informed if you look at the toolbar on the right hand side at the bottom, uh, there is a question mark that almost looks like a, a help window. That's where you can put your, uh, that's actually the chat window where you'll be able to put in any questions. Uh, I'll pick questions up, as I say, at the, at the end of the, the session. So what is Synergy Capture? Why would you need it? Why would you want to use our version of it? Uh, well, we all have recording requirements, whoever we are. So we might be a production house where I need to record live streams or off air or line feeds ready to include within my edits. I might be a broadcaster or a rebroadcaster where again, I've got to turn around content I could be an event manager, so I could be um, sports. It could even be uh, theater, uh, a religious broadcaster that wishes to record services. There's a number of different customers. Some are directly in the broadcast industry, but there's a lot of others that also sit on the, the periphery. So they use uh, broadcast equipment and our techniques, but actually aren't really part of a, a broadcast um, company or a broad, what would be traditionally a broadcast family. Um, as I said, Synergy, we are a software company. Uh, by using standard IT hardware, it means that you can actually get the most out of your investment. It makes it a cost effective way for recording for all people. It comes as part of your standard IT refresh cycle. They're not dedicated hardwares. And because some of the improvements and techniques we make over the years, it also means that you'll be able to use those assets potentially for longer. You'll be able to sweat those assets a bit longer and get a better return on your investment. So we use standard PC, standard servers. We also allow multiple channels to run on a single server. What does that mean? Well, it means that you're not one box per stream that's got a server sat there doing five, ten percent. We allow you to put as many channels on that you like up to the capacity of the resources of that machine so depending on whether it's a single or dual cpu what the performance of those cpus are will determine how many channels you can run but also what you're recording into because the format that's being generated on that box will also have 
an impact. And we have uh, some customers that are running six, even eight channels of recording per server. So they have a sync, they have a, a rack of servers on each server. They're recording eight streams coming in and writing those down to their corporate storage. We also do multi format and multi resolution. So, what do we mean by that? Well, if I've got a single stream coming in, it means, which let's say it's HD, it means I can also write out an SD version of it, maybe a different bitrate version of it if, if it's destined for the web. We may also find that the container is different. Um, I'd actually like an MXF wrapped uh, XD cam maybe to go into my post production and my edit suites, but I also want a lower bitrate H.264 version to be able to put up on the web or my uh, corporate media. So it will allow you to do those simultaneously, frame accurately, both from that single feed coming in. Uh, the only thing it's doing is adding load to the machine itself. Capture fundamentally also has two modes, if you like, two operations that it can run in. It can run completely standalone. So you can buy just Synergy Capture, use it to record live streams coming in to create files that will be compliant to go straight into your Avid or onto your uh, Adobe Premiere. And that would be the end of it. Or you can have it as part of a larger end-to-end -end solution that Synergy can offer you, where it's where you're bringing content into our media asset management system. You'll be able to log it, edit it on your desktop using the Synergy desktop before pushing out to our playout engines. So it clearly fits into our larger e um, uh, infrastructure ecosystem, but you don't have to buy only Synergy. If you just want a point solution for recording, uh, ready for your, your Avids or say your, your um, Premieres, there's no reason why you shouldn't just get the Synergy capture part of it. And it's what we're predominantly gonna be focusing on today is that using it standalone uh, if you'd like a fuller demonstration on any of what I'm doing, um, you can email uh, sales, so sales at synergy.com, and they'll be able to arrange for a, a greater um, demonstration or anything that I'm talking about or, or doing. Edit whilst recording. So this actually works within our own infrastructure very well. So if it's feeding our archive, uh, it means that anybody on your estate can pick up either the broadcast quality or frame accurate uh, proxy quality and edit it in real time whilst it's still recording. We have a number of customers doing that, but we also have customers that are using it standalone. There's a protocol, we we'll get too technical in this presentation, but there is a system called RDD9, which is a way of adding, interleaving the index for a video file within the file itself. This means that if you're compliant to the RDD9 standard, which we are, I can start recording an MXF file, and then that file can actually be opened up in our player, and you can scrub through and view up to the amount of content that's been loaded, or it can go into your Avid, or into your Premiere, into the Adobe Suite. And the Adobe Suite understands these interleaved indexing and will add the content on as new chunks arrive. So we fully support that and actually accelerate that workflow within our own products. We also have an extensive uh, range of inputs uh, because we're not tied to any, any uh, hardware. So we can come in SDI through our card vendors. We've got the, the main four card vendors. Uh, if you look on the website, you can see all the cards that are supported by our software. And that will be able to bring in your SD, your HD or your UHD uh, SDI as a coaxial cable. We do support NDI. So if you've moved across to the new tech NDI type infrastructure, then we can pick up NDI streams. We fully support uh, the use of RDP and UDP streams, so transport streams moving around your network, along with the newer SRT protocol, transport protocol, uh, which we fully support and embrace. We're putting it into all of our products uh, and are indeed part of the SRT Alliance, um, which is a, a great alliance and group that've got a lot of great things coming. You can think of SRT, those that haven't come across it before, as a, a virtual coax 
So it allows you to get broadcast streams across either public or unreliable networks. So something like the internet. In the past, it's been very difficult to get a broadcast quality stream across it by using uh, systems such as SRT. It now allows you to stream those straight across the public internet, um, which we will be seeing later. Uh, we also have the ability of doing shared RAM, which is something we'll, we'll pick off as we go through these slides. It's, it's basically an internal way of us moving frame streams between our own products if they're on the same machine. So rather than encode it and decode it into an IP stream, we can actually pass the frames between our own products uh, using shared RAM. And as it says at the bottom, IBC 2019, sadly, uh, 2020 has been cancelled, as I'm sure you're aware by now, as was NAB. But at last year's show, the IBC show, uh, we actually won Best of Show with the Capture product uh, because it's, uh, as I said before, a very mature product, been around for over 10 years. And we were also demonstrating the use of uh, 8K. So we had a very nice Sharps camera, um, 8K camera. We were showing that we could record that in real time into our MAM. We could top and tail it or uh, start editing that and then play that content back out through our playout solution onto a, a large 8K monitor, which is also on stand while still recording. So we showed that chase uh, playout uh, all in 8K resolution. And let's say for that, uh, we won the best of show. So What's all this got to do with you? How How is Capture going to be useful to me? Well, imagine that you have an event that you need to record, whether that be a musical event, whether it be theater, uh, presentations, let's say religious service. It could be as simple as a tower PC. So you get a decent gaming machine with a NVIDIA graphics card in it. Drop in one of the STI cards into the PCI slot, turn up with this box, plug your three, four cameras into it, and away you go. It's as simple as that. You can start recording those down to local storage within that PC, and at the end of the event, take that PC away and use it then to do your edit of that event, whether that be uh, Avid Premiere, Final Cut Pro. You can take those files and start using them. To expand upon that, something else that you might want to consider, which is kind of the next step, would be to add maybe a multi-viewer running on that same machine. So the multi-viewer software, because so we're all software, would actually take those four streams from the capture engines, make a quad com uh, composite, and then feed that through shared RAM back into another record engine. So now I would have my four ISO recordings on my uh, my store, along with a quad recording as well. So if I wanted to do an offline or a paper edit, I could look at that single file and see the four cameras for that multi-camera shoot um, presented to me. So I could then start doing my my uh, paper edit or my, my offline edit. I said about writing out to multiple places on the previous slide, and this is where this would come in. Imagine it's slightly larger, now it's actually a production, and I've got a exec producer. What he wants is a copy of everything that's recorded that day. Well, at the end of an event, the last thing people want to do is start having to transcode or copy stuff off. So what you can do is plug in a USB drive and simultaneously, as you're recording down your broadcast quality, create that H.264 proxy and write it off to a USB storage device plugged into your workstation. And then at the, at the end of the event, all you've got to do is pull that USB drive, hand it to your producer and say, there you go, there's a frame accurate copy of everything that's now on this box to take back to um, back to station, back to base to go and work on. So that's a very simple use case, but of course we also scale up. So the next kind of step up from this is where you would have an organization where you've got your own server room, you've got broadcast infrastructure, and each of those servers could be handling six or eight streams each. And then you've got your ops in a separate room, separate office, which are then through control PCs, monitoring those servers and starting and stopping the records uh, as needed, monitoring the recordings over the local area network of the, of the building. 
You could also expand that out. So we then move to a res more resilient model where you may have a couple of server rooms, maybe even in different buildings, and the same operators can now monitor and control the engines which are in different data centers or different rooms um, around your estate, all over the uh, local area network at, at this stage. So we're starting to scale up to a more enterprise level. But of course, the other thing people always talk about is the cloud. How do we support the recording in the cloud? So the, so the last example I'm going to show you is what some of our customers are doing for cloud recording, where they want to keep stuff up in, uh, in this case, AWS. So you'd have your servers each sat in their instances. So three instances running for your servers. You'd have some storage uh, up in the cloud. And then you would run a couple of Amazon workspaces and your ops would effectively remote into those workspaces to then use those to control the machines. And this is traditionally how you do it. So they become more of a, a terminal service rather than running the client in the uh, back at uh, on-prem in, in the ops room. You're actually remoting onto a workspace that's then running the client software for it uh, and connecting across the, the internet uh, either with software or something like the uh, Teradici um, terminal type boxes that you can you can get. So that's hopefully useful. It's a quick example of some of the things that uh, you can do and the, the kind of topology from a very simple all-in-one box right through to a resilient uh, multi-building um, facility layout. We move on to features. Uh, I'll quickly go through these uh, and then go in a little bit more detail into them. So we've got 8K support, which we'll talk about next. Uh, our SRT input, both on the input and on the preview side of things. The ability to also create linked AAF files. So those that work in post-production will appreciate the value of this, where if I was creating MXF OP atoms ready to go into my Avid, I could then also have a very small link file for that, which I drag into my project and the media automatically links from my onto my Avid. We'll talk about the different ways of starting recordings, whether that be a, a manual crash record, scheduled recording, or remote uh, controlled recordings. And then we'll talk about some of the new things that came in 14, where those that already start have no capture, where we've extended the monitoring to give you more information uh, back to the operators to show things like CPU, GPU load, uh, buffer loading, um, record times, those sort of things. Uh, we have added web camera, we've added uh, synergy telemetry, and then the ability to control it through APIs. Um, we'll talk very quickly about uh, one of our customers that does a lot of that. They have their own scheduling system and use our APIs to access and start and stop the recordings. So 8K, we now are up to um, 7,680 by 4,320 pixels, uh, which is what we were demonstrating at IBC. Uh, and that's progressive up to uh, 5994. Uh, so it's all the way up to the higher frame rates. So obviously, the frame rates below that as well are also supported. But I hear you crying out, yeah, 8K, but I'm, I'm lucky if I can go HD. You know, I'm SD at the moment. We're only looking to migrate to HD. Why are you talking about 8K? It's of no interest to me at all. Well, you may think that, but the reality is that the improvements to our pipeline and our processing that we had to put in to allow us to reach 8K uh, also means that it's far more efficient at the resolutions that you'll be working at. So you may be only doing HD recordings, but what you'll see is a dramatic improvement in the pipeline and the processing because of the work we've done to reach 8K, which means now that you'll have less load on those servers. So you'll be able to use, sweat those assets a bit longer and get better value for money from them before you have to upgrade them. Maybe if you're moving from SD to HD, you'll find that the reduction in load on those machines mean that you can use the same machines without having to buy new hardware. So everybody benefits from these improvements. So whilst you know, the headline is 8K, don't think that excludes you because you, everybody gets the benefit of 
the the better um, the better code, the the improvements that we we strive to add to our products. Uh, and of course, as everybody knows, as long as you've got a valid SLA in place, all of these upgrades are available to you. So we have customers that bought a long, long time ago, over 10 years ago, when Capture was SD. And we've added the other resolutions and they've never had to rebuy the product. They can just upgrade as it becomes appropriate for their business needs. So that's resolution. Uh, SRT, I'm not going to spend too much time on, but it's, it's something that uh, if you haven't heard of it, go and have a look at it. Um, it's a great solution. It's now been added as an input source into Capture as well as being available as the confidence uh, codec, the feedback codec that you see in the client. Uh, there's a lot of uh, quite major vendors involved with it now, not least of which is Microsoft. Uh, and it's the preferred streaming format used by Azure in, the, in their virtual cloud environment. So yeah, it's going a long way. Um, this year's IBC was going to be a great presentation of it as it moves forward um, but uh, but do keep an eye on it and it's say, something that we fully support and uh, it works very well AF link support if you're in post-production this will make more sense to you but it does mean that if you pick to go into something like an OP1A you can make sure that we adhere to the avid folder structures on your storage and you can create these linked AAFs it's a workflow uh, appreciated by post-production and those using uh, AAF workflows uh, rather than the media being contained within it is purely of a small reference AAF that then points and links to the main media. So what about starting recordings? Uh, on the left hand side we have a snippet from the client, we, I promise we will see the client in, in a moment, uh, which shows the simple blue stop and the red start button. And having selected the engine you're interested in, you do simply hit record and it drops into record. When you've recorded the piece you need, you hit the stop button and it will close that file and stop recording. It is as simple as that. Within that panel, you also have the ability to schedule engines to do timed recordings. If you're gonna do a lot of timed recordings, then you can also use our capture planner that comes with it. So this is a calendar reservation type service that you can host on your network. So people can, with permissions can then add in and edit reservations uh, for different engines, engine groups. You can fire off resilient recordings, uh, a number of different things. And then on the right hand side, there's a snippet there of our web control. So we do also have uh, uh, web services available from the engines, which means that if you have a Safari on a Mac or if you have a tablet uh, on maybe Wi-Fi, you can actually monitor and fire off recordings if you're in a studio and you happen to be on a studio floor and somebody said, oh, can you run to record? Then on a tablet, portable device, you'll be able to put those engines into record and monitor that they're working okay. So it's the, the browser uh, connection to the recording. As I said, we also have um, APIs available. So if you have your own in-house scheduling system or control system, it's something that uh, you can use to control uh, our uh, engines with. Enhanced monitoring. So these that already have seen the product will notice the thumbnails, but what you wouldn't have seen are the additional two um, columns that have been added to those which show you things like uh, encode buffer usage, the number of audio channels, your license status, uh, input outputs, GPU, CPU. So, and these are configurable, as you can see on the dialog on the right hand side, so you can configure what you want these columns to show you. So it's an extensive way of allowing the operators to get more information about what's happening. You also can hide them. You don't have to have that visible if it's not something you want. Web cameras, as I said before, seems like a bit of an unusual one. Uh, it's there, it's very useful for demonstrations, proof of concepts, those sort of things. I'm not suggesting you're gonna win a BAFTA by hooking up a load of web cameras, but when you're testing it out, when you're uh, demonstrating or doing proof of concepts, it can be useful rather than having to wheel out three or four uh, SDI cameras. 
to be able to just use uh, web cameras to demonstrate uh, the whole thing when you're doing the showing the eco-structure. Uh, Synergy telemetry, I'm mindful of the time, so I'm going to skip over this one. If telemetry is something that you're interested in, uh, have a look at Synergy Open. Uh, Open.synergy.com is the website. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and do a search for big data. We explain it all there. But basically, we're taking server parameters uh, and sending them to a central monitoring location where we uh, an elastic search engine and with Grafana you can then monitor those uh, engines look for peak loads look for commonality between disk usage network loadings IOPS all of those sort of technical things if you want to centralize your your monitoring uh, on the system and then finally something that uh, users of uh, Synergy, we've added, we've listened to the call. Um, you see the scheduling panel down the bottom there. This is where you can schedule an engine to actually start a timed recording at a particular time. But we now allow you to go into there, open it up and change the end timing. So if it's a sporting event that's over running, you can now go in there and move the end of the recording uh, rather than having to butt a second recording up to it to do the additional overrun. So we can now edit um, those recordings, which is something that you've been asking for a while. A quick sneak preview, and I hope I don't get in trouble for showing you this one. This is a fantastic coming in 15. So remember we talked about the web environment and where you would normally at the moment run workspaces within the cloud and you'd RDP onto them to be able to monitor them and control them. Well, something we've been working on, and it's coming in version 15, uh, which will be released in the next quarter, is the ability to put the engines themselves straight up into the instances, into the AWS cloud, but to tunnel over the internet and by using a single port to control it and SRT to do the backhauling of the previews, it means you can run the full client on premises. So no longer are you having to run the client remotely and RDP into it. You can actually run the full client on your in your ops room and connect over uh, the internet to or over your, your your wide area network to the cloud to actually control and even build those servers so you can configure them remotely you can also control them remotely now, it also means that you can have a mix of cloud-based engines as well as uh, local on-prem engines all being controlled by the same operators so that's something to watch out for uh, and it's coming in the v15 but uh, it's such a great feature i wanted to to squeeze it into this this webinar now i'm conscious i've been talking an awful lot so let's quickly jump in and do the, the demonstration to show you uh, one or two of these new features. Uh, this is more, not that one. This is more for people that have actually seen, seen the, the product or are using the product currently. Uh, as I said during that presentation, uh, open.synergy.com is the website to go to. You'll find all of our manuals, documentation on there. And then there's the main corporate site, synergy.com which has uh, a lot of the other commercials and as uh, customers and partners, you'll be able to download uh, from that site. So let's have a quick look at what the, the new one looks like. So I'm gonna fire up uh, my control application. And those that know the product, uh, you'll, the first thing you'll notice is that there's an additional dialog box uh, has been added. Let me, what I will do is actually just, I did notice my, my laptop creaking a little. I'll just shut down PowerPoint as well. There's a connection dialog box, which you can OK through, and that secures the connection to the engines. So we can see now I've got two engines. Uh, the original view would been like that, where I've got my two engines, and then depending on which engine I've got selected, It'll show it in this larger pane, and I can see its metadata on the left hand side, on the right hand side, sorry, over here. You see here the new monitoring panel. So now I can look at things like 
CPU load, GPU load, uh, buffering each side of the encoder. So I can see if I've got uh, media backing up where it's occurring. But also at an engine level, if I was to come down here, I can actually change this dialog box and this will show me the same sort of thing in here. So this will actually show me my engine as before, but now some of the other resources that are available to it. Um, let me be, I'm gonna close, close down. Close down those tabs as well to try and get a, a little bit of resources. You can see that my my machine before it's running at about ninety five percent. It now seems to have picked up a few more Windows things, ninety eight percent. So we'll be rather careful when we do a recording. But I will try and do a recording. As I said to you before, it's as simple as select an engine. I've got my profile set up here on the right hand side. So in this drop down, I've got my profile. So I'm going to generate an H two six four off to a USB drive on this machine. And I can then simply hit the record button. We'll see that drop into record. You see then at that point, it'll max out my CPU, which isn't a good thing. And then I can hit the stop. And what that would have done, if I go and have a look on my machine, I've got that NAS. Here is the disk drive. If I was to open that up, there's my recording. And I can take that recording and it's now available to use as just a standard Windows file. I can open it up. I can take that off to my Avid, my Premiere and start using it. Or I could open it up in something like uh, Synergy Player and check it within Player. So there is that recording that I just made live for you. So that gives you an idea of how you can do that. The other thing you can do if you want to, it's something like a service or a big brother, you can gang engines together. So down at the bottom here, I can group sets of engines together into ISO recordings. And then that gives me a single button again to start and stop my recordings with. And then right at the bottom, you see that scheduled recording I was talking about where I can come into here, I can click the add button and it'll open up a reservation for this engine and I can set the time that I'd like a recording to happen plus its metadata. And that would then go ahead and run. The last one, if I just uh, quickly close that down, the last one that I'm quickly going to show you, let's do it on here, is the web. If I was to fire up uh, my my browser, here's the same thing we can see in the browser. I've currently got it to be one second thumbnailing, but it's enough to be able to see what whether the feed's the correct feed or not. Uh, I can if I'm if I switch to SRT, I could actually stream these into the pictures as well. And then from this location again, I could say, yeah, I want to make this recording, and I can then hit the record button and that would start recording for me yeah if it was something like glastonbury the big music event that's meant to be happening this weekend it might be that i started the recording for that set and then between songs i can hit the split button and it'll close the file and start a new file without having without me having to start and stop the recording so i've got each of the songs saved as separate file entities and then I can simply hit the stop again. Uh, so that's how I can use a web interface to control my capture. So I think uh, I'm going to now open up the chat to see whether a, anybody's put anything in the chat. And you can start thinking about any questions that you may have as we start to move toward the, the end of this presentation. Um, if the, you want more information, then sales at synergy.com is a good email to send out to. Uh, those contact details are also on the Synergy website, and they'll be able to help you out with how to buy it, the costings of it, um, and potentially if you want to 
uh, try it out yourself, get in contact with them, and they will be able to facilitate that for you. So I'm looking in the chat. I'm guessing no, either nobody's alive out there or you can't find the chat button since everything out there at the moment is looking blank. So rather than q and I will keep half an eye on that. Uh, but rather than the Q&A, the other thing I'll quickly show you in that case is the uh, config and SRT. So if I quickly open up the configuration for the engine, um, those that uh, want to see a little bit more of the technical back end of it, we're not going to go very technical, but a very quick look. Uh, I can open up my capture manager, which is where I administer my engines. And you see here it's brought this new connection dialog up. This is because I can now connect remotely to engines running in the, the cloud or in, the, in one of my other data centers, not local to me. Um, the engine I want is actually on this machine, so I can go local. And we can see here are my two engines I've currently got configured. Uh, as I said earlier, um, Major League Baseball actually have eight engines uh, running, capture services running on a single server. Uh, with racks and racks of servers giving them a couple of hundred channels that they control with their own control system through the APIs. But the second one here, if we have a look at it, um, is actually running SRT. So the feed we're seeing here coming in is actually coming in from Nuremberg, a uh, German data center, uh, SRT across the internet, uh, streaming. I, in, I didn't tell you, but I'm based in the UK, so I work out of the UK office. So it's coming across from Nuremberg in Germany, across to the UK, uh, and because of the, the current uh, COVID virus, I'm working from home. So it's coming over my normal Virgin Media uh, home internet and being available to me to make those recordings. So SRT is a very powerful, useful tool um, as we work more and more in the cloud and also want cost-effective ways of moving signals uh, between one area, one estate and another. So I'll have one more quick check in the chat to see anything's posted. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so I'm going to assume that there are no questions. Um, you'll be able to watch this video along with other useful how-to videos on the Synergy YouTube channel. So on YouTube, there is a, a Synergy TV on there. Go and have a look at that. As I said, Synergy Open, this website you can see up at the moment, you'll find all of our manuals, how-tos, uh, the number of useful posts, uh, all of which are, is on an open website, so you don't need a login to be able to access those. So if you got more you know you want more information that's a great place to to start the investigation and then if you'd like to talk to any of my colleagues in sales simply mail sales at synergy.com so i'd like to thank you all for your your time and attention and uh, since i can't see any questions in the chat i'm going to uh, call this webinar to a close and say thank you and enjoy the rest of your afternoon Goodbye.